So how long have you been looking for the research gap? Has it been a month, several months, maybe even a year? And you still lack clarity on what exactly my research gap is and how is it connected to my research topic and my research aim questions. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find the research gap in just one day. And this is not some like hyped up YouTube title. I'm really going to show you how to do it fast and also how to do it accurately. So this is not just some kind of made up process that you're gonna follow and then end up in trouble um, with your supervisor or with the journal when you submit your paper. This is going to allow you to find a research gap in one day and write it out in your paper and get confidence and clarity on the direction of your paper and your research question. And it will help you to highlight the novelty of your paper as well. So let's dive right in. Now, if you're new here and you're wondering who I am, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers regularly publish research papers in top journals in the field. And if you're enjoying this video, then click on the like, the subscribe button, and to watch more videos like that and don't miss on future videos. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to get the research gap in here. Step by step, this is exactly what I would do if I was exploring a new topic. And we're just gonna base it off, you know, a, a title of a paper that I recently published, right? So, you know, you might not have such a specific title for your research, but the point is that you probably have a good idea of what your research topic is, right? And you're kind of on the quest to finding the research gap to see if you can justify uh, this topic and like how to specify this research topic and what exactly you want to research, right? So, you know, the first step would be to just define the, the keywords, right? And I've got another much more in-depth training about the keywords themselves. But, you know, obviously, you know, you want to look at your topic and think about all the, all the keywords and potential um, synonyms of these um, keywords, right? Uh, because not all authors will use exactly the same keywords, right? So apart from this one, we might want to have um, teaching English, right? Um, not teaching, but teaching, right? Um, there are also some acronyms that people might want to use, like, you know, these ones. And this can help us to refine our search, basically, to find um, the right um, articles, right? Uh, now we've got like also um, a keyword like this, right? Um, <clears throat> probably native speaker, English teachers, right? Um, then we probably, you know, the opposite would be non-native teachers and so on, right? I'm not going to write all the keywords, but just to give you an idea, right? Um, conference, plenary speakers, probably conferences themselves, right? Um, Plenary speakers are often referred to as keynote speakers, right? That would be a synonym, right? And once you've got a list of these keywords, you can start combining them and start doing your search, right? So let's just do some um, basic and like the first thing when you do your search, I would probably start with more kind of general terms, right? And then go a little bit more specific. Right, um, but let's say you know we're gonna look at um, you know, so we, we're gonna just you know put in um, the keywords um, here, right? And then let's say conference, right? This is just an example, by the way. I'm not going to go into a lot of details of how to actually do the search properly, because I just want to show you how to quickly find the research gap, right? Now, once you've searched for the keywords, what, what you want to do is you know, is to find, is to do the a custom range in here. And you probably only want to be looking, I'd say initially at the last two, three years, right? So we are in January, 2023. So I'm going to look at 2022, 2021. And yeah, let's do 2020. Why not? So it will be um, three full years, right? Um, and then let's search. The reason for that is that like, we want to get the most recent papers with like, the most recent research, the most recent research gaps and, and all of that stuff, right? And, you know, we can also sort it by date. So we get the, the newest ones um, here, right? Uh, now, mind you, in this specific case, not all of them are, are relevant, but what, what you wanna do is like then download 10 publications, right? 
um, and uh, and then start reading those ten publications. So uh, we're just going to open uh, the first one, which is you know which is this one, uh, basically. And I'm going to show you just before we start reading. I'm going to show you how to read this publication to find research gaps. But just before we start reading, you also want to prepare like you know an Excel sheet or a Google Doc um, for taking um, notes, right? So what I'm going to show you with you here is um, available normally exclusively on on my program Research Paper Mastery, and I'm just going to show you, like, give you a quick overview of how this actually works. You know, you can create something like this or something similar, right? And um, what that will allow you to take notes effectively and actually, you know, see the pattern and find what the research gap is, right? So you know, you want to copy and paste the title, the authors and the year, the main aim you know, um, the research gap that the authors themselves identified, um, any notes on materials and methods, the limitations of that particular study, and any suggestions for future research that they've made. And I'm going to explain all that in a second. But you want to create a table like this, be it in Word or in Excel, where you're going to put details on each study, right? Now, when we've got a paper open, and remember, we're just looking at the last two or three years, and you want to download 10 most relevant papers here. What we're going to be doing is, first of all, jumping straight into, you know, the introduction and looking for the research gap um, in the introduction. So we can see the research gap here, right? To the best of our knowledge, there has been no research on X, Y and Z, right? And what I would do is like, I would even just copy and paste it like this and just put it in our sheet here. This is the research gap that the authors um, identified. Now, and the cool thing about it is that, like, obviously, if you're looking at a study from, you know, 2021, in this case, if you're looking for a study, you know, that was conducted last year, the cool thing is that if at that point there were no other studies and this was the first study to do something, well, it's very likely that there's room for a lot of additional studies, right? Because it's unlikely that one study filled this research gap completely. It filled it partially but this means that like you can do more work and you can also try to kind of tweak this research gap a little bit and then answer it as well right um, now another thing that uh, where you want to look um, of course is the methods right um, so you want to take a look let me just uh, find a methodology here. And I would just write a couple of bullet points, like what, what was the sample, where the study was conducted, who they studied or what they studied, what, were the what was the main methods or the data analysis technique. But really, you know, you just want to write two, three bullet points here in materials and methods. The reason for doing that is that you're going to see like overall patterns of you know, what sort of methodology has been used to study this particular topics. And you might see like some gaps that people aren't using, like a really good data analysis technique that should be used because it can give you better results if you use that technique. But other researchers have not used it for some reason, right? And um, so that's why you want to be uh, writing down um, a few things about materials and methods, right? And then where you want to go is sort of like the discussion or the conclusion section and Try to find limitations, right? Um, because um, if it's a new study, you know, the, the researchers give you the problems with their own study, which means that, you know, since it's a new study, these problems probably haven't been answered yet. And you can answer these problems yourself in your new study, right? So let's just very quickly find the limitations, right? So in this case, they are right in the conclusion section. And usually it's very easy to find them. You just look for the word limit, limitation, limited, something like that, right? Um, and we can see that, you know, only seven conferences, right? So you can just take this here and uh, put it in our um, worksheet, right? So you've got limitations, right? And we can just put only seven conferences, right? And you want to copy and paste all of those um, limitations in here, right? Another potential limitation is, right? And Apart from doing this, this is like, you know, if you want to do it really quickly and you're struggling for time, but then to refine it further, you could obviously read the study in more detail, read the methodology in more detail and find additional limitations, right? But the authors themselves have already done the heavy lifting for you. So 
I would just do this first, right? Um, and then, you know, the next thing to write down is suggestions for future research, right? Now, if we look at suggestions for future research, they're typically together with the limitation, right? So future research could thus attempt to do something here, right? So let's just copy and paste it here, right? Um, sorry, where is our sheet? Right? And since this is a new study, right? You obviously want to check if somebody else has already done it, but the, it's quite likely that nobody has done this before, right? Which means that you can do it, of course. And now do it for, you know, at least 10 papers, right? And then this will allow you to see patterns. You will, for example, start seeing patterns in terms of suggestions for future research, right? Or if all studies are suggesting a different thing to do and nobody has done any of those suggested things, then well, you can pick one of those things and use it as a justification for your study, basically, right? Now, to show you how this is exactly done, um, I'll now open a follow-up to exactly this study that I was showing you that we did a couple of months later. Right, so basically what we did, um, once we finished conducting the first study and we wrote it up, we submitted it, like we were already conducting a follow-up study, just basically addressing our own limitations and suggestions for future research. I know that this might be cheeky, but like, you know, this is what a lot of researchers do. It's just very efficient. Um, and just to show you kind of like how we um, did that, right, so, um, what we did is basically, you know, shift the focus, first of all, to a different region of the world. So the previous study was in the EU, right? And when we present the research gap, we say that, you know, the only other study on this topic was conducted in the EU, right? But what we're going to do is to, you know, to see if the results are replicable in um, Asia, right? And then, you know, we just respond to one of the limitations of the previous paper right? So this is exactly what, what you want to do. When you're reading those previous papers and identifying, for example, their limitations, right? Then you can address those limitations. Look at the suggestions for future research from those papers and address those um, in your paper and use it to justify um, the aim of your paper and present the research gap. If you want more personalized help and you want to work with me more one-to-one, -one, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation where we're going to dive deeper and identify your main challenges, um, specify your goals, and then give you a personalized action plan that will help you to achieve those goals faster. And the link to schedule that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.